Now your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Yeah, quite chilly today. Look at this. We're down to 21 now in Champaign, 25 in Mattoon, but with the wind factored in, it feels like 12 degrees outside. Very chilly on this Tuesday night. 10 in Pontiac and in Watsika. It's going to be a cold evening for sure. Uh, clouds clearing, and that's what's allowing for those temperatures to continue to fall off tonight. Again, if you're heading out and about this evening, it's going to be a chilly one all the way down to the teens here a little after midnight. So how long is this cold air going to stick around? And we've got some snow to talk about in the seven day. We'll show it to you coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. This was weighing on her for a, a long period of time. A teenager is accusing her longtime pastor of sexually assaulting her. And she says it was happening for years. We'll tell you what he says. Plus, a Catholic church says someone is posing as a priest. What they say they're trying to get from you. And students could be swapping schools and neighborhoods. Why some parents say they feel left out of the conversation. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. He knew what he was doing was illegal, was wrong. He was more than three times the age of a girl he's accused of sexually assaulting. And police say when he confessed to it, he was arrested. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. A Champagne pastor is charged with committing sex crimes against a teenage member of the congregation. 48-year-old Roger Van Radden was the youth pastor at Faith Baptist Church on Market Street. The teenager was someone he oversaw. WC93's Emily Braun is live in our newsroom tonight. Now, Emily, this wasn't just one time. Jennifer, deputies say this has been happening often and for years. It started in September of 2015 when the girl was just 14 years old. It went on until August of this year. The girl is now 18. With the support of her family and friends, she came forward and reported it to police. He confessed and was arrested. He was released from jail earlier this week and will be back in court next month. The sheriff's office told me most of the time the sexual contact happened at the church. They don't have any evidence to suggest it was forced, but deputies say given the age difference and the circumstances, this is still a clear-cut sexual assault case. I think, I think in this situation, this investigation here, I think it is somewhat obvious that he used his position within the church to gain you know, affection from her. He says he applauds the teenager for having the strength and courage to come forward and report this. As of right now, deputies don't have any reason to believe there are, are other victims, and they hope that remains true. The lead pastor at the church confirmed Van Raden is no longer employed there, but you'll hear more about what he has to say about it coming up later tonight at 10. For now, live in the newsroom, Emily Braun, WCI3, your local news leader. Emily, thank you. We'll see you at 6. Now, Van Raden was charged with three counts of sexual assault and one count of criminal sexual abuse. If he's convicted of the more serious charge of assault, he faces 4 to 15 years in prison. Leaders at another Champaign church are warning members of their congregation to look out for a recent scam. Someone is posing as a priest from St. Matthew Catholic Church. They're using the priest's names to text people, asking them to buy gift cards for people in need. Church leaders say they've gotten three reports of that so far. If you get one, you should call the church and check. They say a priest would never ask for a donation unless it was a face-to-face -face conversation. A section of I-74 is open tonight after a semi-rollover. It happened before 11, three miles east of Ogden. State police say the semi was headed west when it ran off the highway overturning and hitting a guardrail. The driver was hurt and taken to the hospital. He's also facing a charge of failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident. We have an update on a deadly bus crash between a motorcycle and SUV. The Sangamon County coroner identified the man killed. It happened near South 11th Street and East Cornell Avenue yesterday. 21-year-old Zane Feagans was riding west on Cornell when the SUV pulled in front of him. Feagans died at a nearby hospital. The crash remains under investigation. One man was taken to the hospital after a crash on I-70 west of Effingham. Police say 33-year-old Hassan Habad tried to pull over to the shoulder by the rest stop. He swerved off the road and hit a 28-year-old who was already parked on the shoulder. That 28-year-old's car rolled and 
That person was taken to the hospital. Chabad was ticketed for improper lane usage. The Decatur School Board is meeting right now and reviewing a proposal from the Teaching Assistance Union. The union and school district left last month's federal mediation session without an agreement. They sent out a joint statement saying they hope to reach a settlement soon. The two groups will meet next Monday to go over the latest proposal from the union. The district says it won't comment until after that meeting, and the union says it's sticking to last month's joint statement. This is a follow-up now out of the Champaign School District. Some parents feel they're being kept in the dark about a change the school board is considering. Yeah, the change would swap students between Garden Hills and International Prep Academy. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting is here. So, Courtney, why are they considering the move? Yeah, Paul, it's because they say they need more space for a kindergarten through eighth grade Spanish dual language program. Right now, that program is only K through fifth at IPA. This swap would use the more than 200 open seats the Garden Hills has. It would bus the kids from International Prep Academy to Garden Hills. Garden Hills students would go to the school, go to school in the IPA building. Some people who talked at the meeting said they didn't like the idea because it would change what is a pillar in the community. International Prep Academy parents came to last night's meeting in support of the school expansion. They were surprised to find out about this swap. And I would be a little bit unhappy, you know, if they did move it, you know, because it's convenient for me and I'm sure it is for a lot of, uh, a lot of, of the neighbors, you know, that have kids going to school. Christy Ann Thompson, who you just heard from, says the first time she found out about this consideration was last night's meeting. This change is not happening yet. Board members are now trying to get more input from the community about this idea. They'll be having public forums about it next month. Paul. I'm sure a lot of discussion yet to come. Courtney, thanks. A toy drive is bringing more than just presents to kids. How one is helping the whole family. Plus, Miss Illinois is heading east. The big issue she plans to bring to the Miss America stage.